Operation Warship, Defense and Comms, Dingo, and to reinforce the Earth. Man, we have the squad in command of the arena, Roger. I don't know if it is, Brian, but Carl is going to respond like a squad. Welcome to Live Action Star Wars. I'm Ralph. I'm James. And today we are discussing the Book of Boba Fett, Chapter 3, The Streets of Mos Espa. Yes, the new GTA game. <laughs> um, we're not doing it alone. Nope. We have a guest today from Geek Dad Life and the Lost Podcast with Jane Jack. And Toy Amongst, Geeks. amongst others. <laughs> and Screen Geeks. And from the Star Wars Holiday Special, as brought to you by Live Action Star Wars. How far back do you want to <laughs> Welcome back, oh. Jay. Oh, I'm so excited to be back. I'm so thankful to be back. It is bright and early here on the East Coast. Actually, no, Ralph, it's super early for you. but It is 7.30 on the West Coast. I've got my oh, Grogu tea mug. Uh, good. In celebration. I, uh, once again, have my... I, this is this is the reason I drink like this. No one drinks like this. <laughs> is because like my friend Dustin Oscar and the rest of the Benzing family have a store called Earth to Kentucky. Jay, you should give Earth to Kentucky a follow. All right, 100%. I will. I, I'll, on um, the Instagram, is it Instagram? Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. Earth okay. Kentucky. Earth even Kentucky. I even have a Earth to Kentucky. Now it's like almost a permanent plug for my friend Dustin. It's a toy shop. Oh, it's well, a toy shop, perfect. and they do they do customs and uh, uh, like uh, what are they? Not customs. They do customs, but uh, what do you call them? Uh, bootlegs. Ooh, boots. Ooh, okay, like a, fun like bootlegs. A, okay. Yeah, yeah. But more like an artist show. So I'm gonna grab something. Yeah. I got from Earth There's Kentucky. a big, uh, big this, one called Designer Con, where yeah, people make like awesome. Yeah, I got this it. Forbidden Zone. Yeah. Um, sorry, kids. There's a. <laughs> Oh, oh, be careful. YouTube. But uh it's 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 they treat bootlegs as art and so they'll do yeah. like they'll do like a gallery. Mm -hmm. oh, like so gallery cool. 1988 do the same thing, don't yes. they? Like there's yeah. a there's yeah. a bunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so like, Earth Kentucky, toys as art is oh, cool. But but it's a shop that's open year round, so you can go anytime. But they also right, sell right, old going on vintage. my phone right now. Earth to Kentucky, I'll put it in there. Okay. Look at that. And we, we said that we've never had ads on this show. We're doing we're giving them away. I've been for doing free. this. <laughs> I've been doing this for a while. Yeah. I used to just have like the actual branding on it. And I'm like, why am I promoting <laughs> what well, still says? It still says Circle K, which, you know, is fine. The, the, anyway. Uh, right here. See, Earth to Kentucky. Earth to Kentucky. Where, where's the right there? And follow. Boom. Yeah. Nailed I did. It. See, good job. Earth to Kentucky. Ralph's doing a great job for you. There we go. Awesome. We have a lot of people in the chat. I'm going to do a J style. Ooh, there you go. It's not going to be as much as Toy Geeks, but we have Jim Watari. <laughs> hey, Jim. Morning. Scott D. Scott D. Good Welcome back, Scott. You. Sarah Kelly. Hello, Sarah. That's my, that's my sister. <gasps> my sister. And uh, not, JT Kell. Yeah, these these early ones, are our chats are a little bit less, but mm. it's Wait, fine. Yeah. It, I love like, having the show available as soon as they're done watching. That is I true. Watching, I so think true. I think we found, like from last week to this week, that the level of excitement about the episode relates mm. to the amount of people that are willing to get up early and watch a podcast mm. immediately after. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, with that in mind, mm. uh, what did you guys think of this episode? I'm going to guess. Should I just... I'll go last. You guys... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say that it's probably the least favorite of all of our episodes. Well, of all of everything of our episodes, of these, just of, of a, these, of these, the uh, of the Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah, I'll agree with that. It's it's so far it's it's the one that Jay. I was like, oh, okay. Did Jay love it? Can I just say, like, <laughs> I didn't oh really God. dig last week, and I watched last week's episode with oh. you, and I was like, oh man, I did not get that same feel. And then this one, I was like, all right, I really liked it. But apparently, like, <laughs> I'm in so the opposite world. Goes, but it goes yeah. to show you there's Star Wars for everyone. And <laughs> you don't like there's there's always going to be something in there, even though, like, there were certain things I didn't care for in this episode. There's definitely things where I was like, this is 
fucking awesome. I love it. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, the- I, I got asked, like, what was the episode like? And uh, I, I was telling my girlfriend, um, who's at work, she'll be watching it later on. Um, she was like, what was it like? And I was like, I didn't enjoy it as much as last week. I've got a few critiques, but on the whole, I still really enjoyed it. It's still a really good episode of TV, but it's, it's you know, not as good as last week. It's still really good. So, right. like, and and I love I love Scott D's call out here because those uh, uh Vespa speeder bikes yeah um, are totally like the neutrinos from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like those little hot rod yeah kids from the other dimension right and uh, that was a little hokey I- I'll give well, you that but but I don't you know, know it's I- funny because Power Rangers is trending right now on Twitter interesting because of that because of the colors and everything yeah I guess yeah. it yeah. was yeah yeah uh, I I like the concept of the spiker gang i like the vespas sort of because you they look like vespas there's the one with yeah. the, all the mirrors and stuff yeah. and the way that yeah they're, they're up front on them like they're they're sort of really leaning over the handlebars and everything i like the speeder chase and all the gags in it mm-hmm. i like the gags i don't like the effects on the speeders it looked slow and choppy and weird yes the, it, so it, it, it yeah, it looked unfinished it's, it's later, or something. It's later, in the, it's later in the afternoon for me, so I've had a chance to watch the episode twice, as I do. Of course. Um, and the, the speed of the chase, first time around, I was like, why does this feel slow? Yeah. And then I watched it again. I, I enjoyed all the gags. The, the going through the painting was amazing. Yes, yes. Um, the crashing into the, the Meluron fruit at the end, brilliant, like, fruit car. It's, you know, it's it's... Cabbage Man from Avatar. It's the fruit from everything else. It's the mm-hmm. manure truck in Back to the Future. We've seen it a million times. Um, but and, and to have the the Meilu on fruits, which are like in Rebels so much, is a cool little call out as well. But it is the Vespers that make it feel slow. Yeah. Like from watching it that second time, the way that they're positioned on them, and I don't know if it, I mean it was obviously shot sort of probably in the volume and stuff, but mm-hmm. the way yeah. that the the performers are on those bikes, they're not really moving much. They're yeah. not like they're not active in it that much, and they're more stable looking than a traditional speeder bike. Mm-hmm. So right. it just feels slower. Yeah. Um, yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't my favorite. In- and maybe i and is it because like i thought too because that was the only thing in the episode i didn't like or i just i was like eh, that wasn't especially for robert rodriguez directed thing like i was just like mm. he's you know he's so good at setting up action and that felt mm. with like totally boring it's like we could have cut that down to like two seconds yeah crash into the thing and then move on but the thing is this is our short shortest episode yet mm-hmm so maybe they felt like they needed Cut to fill out. the time. But, mm. but is it the fact that they look just like Vespas, which are not like in our mind mentally is not a fast think, thing. No, I and, like, think we're still could have done it faster. I think so too. I think like just I supercharge think... them. Like people mod those things all the time. Yeah. Like you can, you can make them look quite quick. I think having them look slow and somewhat hokey would be interesting if they then sort of, I don't know, kicked a thruster and it's like Biff's, power yeah. hoverboard in back to the mm-hmm. future 2 <laughs> don't know why i'm referencing back to the future loads today um i i like the look of them but not on tattooing yeah i think they would have been cool it's interesting i think they'd have been interesting on like coruscant more... corellia anywhere like that Nebulian. but not on tattooing they look too I... shiny when they came walking up to the mayors and they were yeah. flanking boba fett and I'm like, wow, those are really, really bright for Tatooine. Mm. But and I was like, literally, like staring at it, being like, this is not something I've seen on a Tatooine. This is mm. really interesting, and I kind of liked it because these kids don't have jobs. Mm. Clearly, they're they're they must be scrapping the droid parts or mm. ob- or stealing. They're stealing from it's Stephen. Just, Root. Made good money for that eye, so yeah. So I don't see why not. Like if you're if you're a kid and you're living on Tatooine where everything is tan, <laughs> everything is brown, mm. everything is like you kind of want to make it pop. Have yeah, you want something different. You want something to stand out. You want to be flashy. And so I was like I'm kind of fine with this. Like if I lived on Tatooine, 
I totally wanted one of those speeders. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Like that that sort of whole gang. I I really like the concept of them them using like droid parts and other things to sort of <laughs> mod themselves. I thought it was cool. We got a couple of neat little <laughs> gags with that in the chase. That was my favorite part of the chase is when he pulled yeah. up next to the speeder and started like yes. power kicking it with his yeah. spiky yeah. boot. Yep. It's like all of that's very cool. Um, and I like the gang. I was sort of expecting them to be a bit more uh, reservation dogs than they were. Like they, they felt a bit too, I don't know, a bit too like they had money. They looked too clean. Like their bikes look too clean. Their clothes. I really like the well, costuming, but all of that looked too crisp fresh out of the well, wardrobe the fact, the fact that they were stealing water from steven root and the prices he was charging were obviously way too high yeah they probably could have made a good profit off if of they're flipping that it, yeah. and still oh, yeah. yeah so i feel like that's they're actually you know, quite successful criminals yeah yeah, yeah. love yeah. steven root's appearance by the way uh lortha peel was, was that character? the character's name okay lortha i've just got um the the that- water monger <laughs> Is that, it's on IMDb. Is, That's what okay, uh, cool. the is, is, is Lortha Peel. Is that cool. something we can we can we can flip around to be like what's his character's name in Office v? Space? What's his character's name in <laughs> Office Space? Uh he's uh uh shit, who is he in I can't think of his name. Milton. Yeah, no, Milton. it doesn't yeah. I was like, uh, is it like an offshoot of that? Uh Brett Dozerman's here. Hey Brett. Um, um yeah, I thought he was really good. He was just good and sniveling and everything. The fact that even when they were paying him off at the end, he was just a bit like, "I don't. This isn't. This isn't enough. This isn't what they've stolen from me." Yeah. Uh, and the way that he looked at his bag of coin at the end, I was just like, "I think he's going to be back. I think he's going to try oh, yeah. and bring others, like, and maybe put all of that money back in and try and hire some people to take out Boba Fett oh. themselves." His uh, his acting, I mean, he's a great. I think he's a great actor in general. But like, I I felt more like his character in Barry or whatever, where it's just like a little bit of humor, but also like a lot of times. Oh, yeah, it. yeah. Um, and so that's that's the read I got too. It's just like eh, he's that's not the last we're gonna see of him because mm. <laughs> he hasn't had his teeth pulled out yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've only now I'm not I'm not through with Barry. I'm like halfway through season two. Okay. Um, the the first season. <sighs> pissed yeah. me off the finale of the first season really pissed me off yeah um, well, I, well, yeah it's not a barry a show but because <laughs> yeah but when barry killed that person who i really liked ah uh, okay all right but that's kind um, of the thing right that's kind of the yeah Barry's not but i mean person but it made me mad i, it's fine. <laughs> I like bill Hader. i, yeah. I don't want to dislike bill Hader. <laughs> <laughs> who did the voice of BB-8 in uh, the sequel series? See, mm-hmm. we- right. It all comes right. back around. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, um, what did you think? Like, while we stay on this gang, um, Sophie Thatcher was like the lead girl. I've not seen Yellow Jackets, but everyone seems to be going on about it and how much of a good show it is. That I think is what she's most famous from recently. Um, either of you guys seen Yellow Jackets? Know anything about her? No, me neither. Not a clue. I liked her though. I yeah, I thought she was cool. Trash, trash. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, I I I dug I dug her. I dug. Uh, I think it's yeah. hilarious that everyone overanalyzed the trailers as they always do and went, oh, that's gonna be um Omega from Bad Batch, or that's gonna be the uh. We don't uh, know yet. Well, yeah, no, or that's gonna be Could the girl be... from the Tuscan camp, like, or yeah, any of that's that. That's what I was thinking. Like, I, I don't think it's any of those. I think she's, yeah. she is who she is. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're gonna overcomplicate it. Not with what four episodes left to go. See, that's, that's <sighs> if there's one thing, I and and that's why I'm curious that the last episode where there's so much time in the Tuscan journey and stuff. Which I I liked. It just to me the the pacing seems weird. Like it like that was a lot of time spent there, mm. and then you have the kind of payoff in this episode and where they all get. It's really killed, quick, right? Yeah, it's a really yeah. short scene. And and so that's where it just seems a little disjointed to me. Like where the pacing or the, the editing just doesn't seem as tight. Like uh, uh, yeah. as, as maybe a pre- it's almost like you could have taken the the scene from this episode, put it in last week, taken yes. the taking the the present day stuff out of that and just had an yes. entire flashback episode exactly yeah. exactly that's and and i think it would have a greater impact because then it kind of tells the full story of 
his kind of dances with wolves. So I would do that as episode three if I was doing it that way, because that mm-hmm. way you get the pikes introduced at the end of episode two, which would have yep. been this this one. Yes. And then you see why the pikes and Boba have some history yes. and everything. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, I think I agree with you actually. In retrospect, like thinking about the way that it is set up, I think that would have worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, because the because the whole climax the button on this episode is the pikes have arrived yes yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so yeah that would have made sense and then you go back and then see what the pikes means to boba fett mm-hmm. um yeah it's it's kind of rough these shows it, you know it's hard it's still hard for me to get used to watching star wars as a tv show yeah i never you in, in star wars i never really had time for like a podcast you don't watch part of a movie and then do a podcast and speculate what's going to happen sure so you get the full story tv you shows talk about it <laughs> yeah yeah so it's hard to it's hard to talk about an incomplete story and there might be a reason why these episodes were the way they were mm-hmm. edited yeah like it's that. true but I, I i think they need to look to like george lucas and the kind of this those the, the, the serialized mm-hmm. kind of saturday oh man matinee stuff and and, yeah. and those kind of always end on that cliffhanger. I think it's something I always did in the, in the film, too, or like Raiders of the Lost Ark as well. It's just like this big action that kind of ends it. And and so to to uh, like what we're talking about, where if you if you rearrange it a little bit, it just kind of makes it feel more like this this section ends on a cliffhanger. Mm. Oh, what's the next story going to be? And yeah. Just, <laughs> and it just feels yeah. a little bit disjointed. Where I think Mandalorian did. The first season wasn't great, but I still really liked it. But season two was amazing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I feel like they just have to find the rhythm. And I, I haven't really gotten the sense of the rhythm right in, in this so far. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, well, like, what, three episodes in now? It's mm-hmm. a very different show to The Mandalorian as well. Yeah. Like, the pacing Which I is. I appreciate. I do too. Like, I wouldn't want everything oh, yeah, to be the yeah. same. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's go to town and find. Yeah. It, it gives me hope for things like Andor and uh, yeah. Obi Wan that they're all going to have a different tone. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah yeah um, uh can we talk about what i did like oh uh go ahead oh Let's scotty see. says do you think boba is being portrayed as a way too trusting in this criminal world uh danny trejo is cool yeah, um, I mean, I except they didn't control the rancor with boba nobody the, the whole time outside boba's look with Danny Trejo as the Rancor Keeper, like I was just like, he's lying to him. Rancors aren't nice and friendly. He's just basically trying to lure him so that it'll like eat him or something like that. Is this is this like justice for Malakili? Like, is this whole thing yeah, just I, trying to sort of recontextualize why he was crying at the end? Because he'd like imprinted on him and vice versa. Like they were actually. I, I don't know. I I'm I I'm fine with this. Mm. The rancor being oh same, I'm perfectly yeah. fine with it. But the just be, it being Danny Trejo and just like the type of characters he plays, and I was just like, oh, it's this is a double when, cross, it's totally yeah. double cross or something. But even like I mean, that's happened with Danny Trejo himself. It's like you're expecting a double cross, and then it's not. He's actually the good guy. Yeah. So yeah. like I don't I don't know. First time around, I was at the end that scene where he's like, don't worry, he'll be back. I I saw it sinister. Second oh, you time I saw it is like good. At oh, that. my my first watch, I thought it was sinister. Uh, second watch, I was like, no, he's he's wholesome. He seems cool. He seems like yeah. he's yeah. a good guy. Loves his creatures. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like, has seen the Boba Fett is like respectful. And I don't know. There's something about when when we're seeing Boba Fett as this light, cheery character, like the the like a Bantha thing from last week, or mm-hmm. anything um, that we've seen, where basically whenever he's smiling, he seems really nice. And it's like it's it's Tamora Morrison coming out, and it's yeah, like yeah. he seems like just a lovely guy. And I feel like characters like Danny Trejo's Rancor Keeper are, mm-hmm. are getting that and going, yeah, okay, we'll we'll trust him. We're we're with this guy because he means well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And- JT says that Danny Trejo took me out of it. He's only ever Danny Trejo to me. I agree, but at the same time, I was happy to see him there. Yeah, I, I feel like he it was actual Danny Trejo went like flew to the star wars galaxy and he's yeah. playing himself and i like that yeah. um, it's it's the right size role for him like even mm-hmm. if like i thought at first when he just showed up he wasn't gonna have any speaking part like any speaking mm-hmm. roles we were just gonna mm-hmm. see him like almost like the delivery guy of the rancor and that was gonna be it yeah so when we got the scene with him i was like this is cool and now i think we're gonna check in with him a couple more times at least before 
Boba is riding a rancor and <laughs> causing some shit. Yeah, there's um so Boba wants to ride this rancor, mm-hmm. which they better deliver on that. I want to see it. Uh, yeah, you can't sell it so and bad. Not- they, they have to, but I, I just I can I just I, I can picture it now. All of the memes of like Boba Fett, and just different random big things. Like I want to ride it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He sees every big animal. He's like, I want to ride like that. a like a bantha. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Do okay. we think that he but, rode the the uh, like the flying whale things on Camino ever when he was a kid? Right, uh, he has to. Yeah, now. assuming. Have, yeah. Awesome. Well, he did mention. So this is the thing. He did mention that he's written things 10 times the size of a Rancor, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which the only time we've seen that is in the holiday special. You're right. Last so, time we had Jay on. You're right. Yeah. Yes. It was a great yeah, time. That, that, yeah, that segment got cut out because of YouTube. Did. Um, oh, yeah. But that's because that's the one thing Disney acknowledges from the holiday special, mm-hmm. and they have it up on Disney+. Plus. Um, so I'm assuming that this is the, the Mythosaur, animated wasn't it? series. From, yeah. Yeah, is one hundred percent canon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for sure that either we'll get a flashback to the uh, the dragon from the holiday special. <laughs> <Do you> think, <laughs> I mean, maybe that's the "I am Boba Fett" line comes from. Like, yeah, this. yeah, we heard it in the trailer. Um, but can I just say, like, going into the the Star Wars toy side of things, uh, Hasbro did this whole you know Hasbro Pulse big rancor <laughs> as as. Oh boy. Uh, as like a, mm. a thing you pre-ordered it and it was fame it famously failed yeah this yeah and and it just and i feel like and i haven't been it just this was f drop today but I'm, I'm curious to see like the fallout of just like they accidentally leaked they were going to do a rancor and so the the idea is we don't know for sure that they kind of like all right let's just put it out the next time we do a big hasbro thing but i wonder now if like the plan was really to make a rancor based on this rancor and it just but now we're just not going to get anything i mean like it, yeah i it could have been and one of the what do they call it the extension extended goals the mm-hmm. yeah yeah could have been could have been a uh, boba fett with a harness or a saddle yeah. sure yeah yeah and then then well, imagine danny trejo. Then, danny trejo figure <laughs> yeah like those could be the what do they call those when you stretch do more goals. of the stretch goals? Yeah, yeah. Um, like, would you jump at that rancor more? It, it depends how it shows up in this show, right? Like, if there is right. this like iconic finale episode, him riding the rancor just lays waste to the pikes or something like that. Then, yeah, I think it's a it, they the t- the whole thing was just a botch across the board. But it's a it would be a shame <laughs> that if their plan was to maybe tie it more into Book of Boba Fett and that got blown because somebody spoiled it accidentally, mm-hmm. and uh, that they're going to do a six inch scale rancor. Um, and now you know, oh you know, my god, like like a rancor, and then with Danny Trejo and the sort of hover flatbed truck. Yeah, that'd be cool. It'd be awesome. Speaking of uh, speaking of the Pikes, Star Wars guy. Sorry if this has been covered, but do you think the Pikes will be the main big bad enemy to Boba? I, I'm still think I still think they're a red herring. I, I, I we kind of brought up Kira last week, so I've maybe got it written down. The reveal. I've got it written down she, here. So I think yeah, she is taking over the Pike Syndicate as part of um, Crimson Dawn. Mm. So it. It's it's playing as the stuff that's in comics. Here's James's comic book corner. Um, but it's, <laughs> oh. The stuff that's happening in comics at the moment is Crimson Dawn is back. That's all uh, immediately post Empire Strikes Back, pre Jedi. Crimson Dawn's back. They are like building stuff back up, bringing the criminal enterprise sort of back up, and Kira is in control there. Um, she has sort of manipulated things. That's why the huts have been mostly wiped out. Mm-hmm. Um, Vader and it sounds like they're giving up. Yeah, in this episode. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're, yeah, we're five years later, but we know what sort of they're like from Clone Wars and things like that. That they mm-hmm. are going to be infighting Game of Thrones sort of style, and so they've probably been doing that, which is why they're not interested in Tatooine now. It's like yeah. leave it to Bib Fortuna. Okay, he's gone. Let's go and have a look. Okay, Boba Fett's not going to be a pushover, so let's just mm-hmm. leave it. Whatever, it's yeah. not worth it. Mm-hmm. Um. Meanwhile, yeah, Kira possibly in control of the Pikes or something. Uh, shadowy background, like Maul was. I was I was expecting her to come off of the transport. 
That'd be cool. I was really expecting in a robe. Off of the transport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm. We got Boba in a robe. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, well, yeah. When, Robo when, Fett? uh, yeah, Robo Fett. Uh, when Black Kersantan, um, attacks like coming out of the flashback, which I thought was cool. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, they they have a big old fight again. Uh, something that's happened in the comics before. They've been on the same team there and they've fought each other. Um, so to see them go at it, and then the kids came in and mm -hmm. sort of helped. The Gamorreans came in. Where was Fennec Shan throughout right? the entire fight? My, I like each episode. I'm getting more. Did she and let more him in? Yeah, I'm getting more and more suspicious. Yeah, I don't I want don't to. Like I don't. I don't want. Yeah, I her, agree. But I'm I'm getting more and more suspicious. Because Boba Fett does the opposite of every suggestion that she says mm -hmm. as well. When she says chill, he's like, no, we need to fight. When she says fight, he's like, nah, yeah. let's just wait. Yeah. That's it's a really it's a really good read because again, yeah, where the heck was she? Yeah. At the very end. Yeah. And how did that Wookiee get in? Right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um totally. it, it, yeah, something it's a big wrong. old it's a big old gate to just sneak by without someone letting you in. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't like. I'm not saying that he couldn't do it. He could have scaled that tower. Like sure. he's got his claws. Wookie yeah. climbs things, so he could have just scaled it from the outside. But like, or they're yeah, spaceships. I don't know. You can hover up there. <laughs> True. Everyone's always climbing and running and <laughs> walking. Well, like, it, no, you have spaceships. Speaking of like, yeah, you have ships. Like, th they did they have any of the speeder bikes left over the Tuscans? Because I would have thought if he would have taken one of those bikes, he could have gotten to the the head pike guy and back in time before the massacre of the Tuscan Raiders. But since he went the Bantha route, it probably mm -hmm. took him like seventeen weeks to get back and forth, <laughs> which allowed enough time for the poor Tuscan camp camp to get knocked out. Yeah, could could well have been. Uh, we found out what the name of that the Swoop Gang was. It was the the Kintan Striders. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the Is fact that, that they... No, nah, it's brand it's new. Kind of thing. No, nah, it's new to me anyway. Uh, I didn't look it up. But uh, the fact that they were able to slaughter all those Tuscans, you know, like animals, mm -hmm. made me a mm -hmm. little bit like, huh, really? Yeah. I was like, you would have thought that they'd be able to put up more of a fight. Uh, yeah, right. exactly. It, 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 so... I think it was probably the pikes that came in or something just wiped them out or something like yeah, that. Yeah, possibly. They're setting up their sort of underling gangs who are just doing the sort mm. of yeah, the street stuff. Um we saw we definitely saw the the chieftain. We it's implied that the kid was dead as well because he had the sort of the gaffy stick, the training mm -hmm. gaffy stick. We didn't see the warrior, the the one from the train who was a badass yes. uh last week. She was really good. Um we didn't see anything of her, so I'm holding out hope that she's out there and kicking ass still. She'll be the one on the throne at the end of the season. Ooh. Or the one that he <laughs> is sort of doing this all for. So they brought up again, this is the second week in a row that they brought up Tatooine needs to be covered in water. Yeah. Mm. Are we going to get the total recall ending? <laughs> Was the water I... taken away as part of some sort of control? I hope not. Yeah, are, are we going to see Tatooine? Are th is this Disney finally saying we're done visiting Tatooine? <laughs> Until Obi Wan, <laughs> it's either there's like a secret ocean underneath it all, or whatever, or yeah. or I think maybe just the twin suns, maybe like a a star kind of like got into their orbit and just dried the whole thing out. Yeah, Speaking used of to twins, just be one. <laughs> yeah, Scott asked if those twins are connected Siamese twin huts. I don't. And then I Steve think that says, "Good question." <laughs> they're so they're so interconnected i think it's they're just gross. creepy and yeah, yeah creepy weird crime family do like... we do we know that they're related yeah they are well they're they twins brother and sister yeah well they call them <laughs> twins is that just a name that you say like oh those gross oh i don't know i, don't I, don't know, like I just i really I don't don't like his, it. uh his chicken towel just a little yeah the little hooja yeah 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 um <laughs> Yeah, she spoke uh, this a... week. We didn't we didn't hear anything from her last week, but yeah, she she had things to say this week and just be like, Yeah, we did send him to kill you, but you know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the next morning as well. It was like it was immediate. 
Right. Did anybody else catch Amy Sedaris in the flashback? Yes. Oh, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I was just watching yeah. that hair. That hair. You well, and the picture. Or... They just dressed somebody up as her. Like, would she come? It wasn't her. Little... It, like, she wasn't in the credits anywhere. And okay. I think it was a case of you put her in that it background. Was... Yeah, because it's just showing you that they're in Moss Eisley at that mm -hmm. point instead of Moss Espa. And immediately after Return of the Jedi as well, because if you think about when he got out of the pit, that was at the beginning of Return of the Jedi. So now the, yeah. the length of time that that movie takes place over has passed. Yeah. The Empire has fallen, mm -hmm. like probably not everywhere, but it's starting to crumble and people are starting to put Stormtrooper heads on spikes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought so that was on cool. Navarro. I think when we saw it before, it was on Navarro, but yeah. you know, I'm sure that's every so this is thing they do every everywhere. outer rim sort of town probably yeah. was doing something similar. Mm -hmm. Man, I would re I would grab one, repaint it, repurpose it, and just wear one because they're so cool. <laughs> but then they, they would come it's, after you. Yeah, it's like better than a black series helmet. It's like it's an actual <laughs> helmet. Which again, the Boba Fett helmet cracks me up because on the show it looks like it's just lined with like foam core. And the Black Series helmet, which we saw on episode one, our, our, our guest, Eddie, mm -hmm. had the Black Series, which had the little, like, speakers yep. in and stuff. Mm -hmm. When he takes the helmet off, it makes a yes. sound. Yep. It's like, why is it making that sound? Yeah. It's literally it's, not electronic. We've seen the anything. inside. <laughs> We've seen the inside of it, and it's just, like, foam like, <laughs> taped in there. Maybe it's got a mister in there, just, like, keeping him cool <laughs> yeah, exactly. in the hot yeah, suns of Tatooine. It turns it yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, right. a dune or whatever. <laughs> Toy Connections here, bonus Screen Geeks episode. Good morning from the West Coast, gents. Hey, Kevin. Um, Toy Connections, you're up way too early. I know. Uh, I'm yes. also on the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Great uh, toy channel, though. Check them out if anybody has them. Um, any, anybody just That'd found your me. channel from I, a Mark Ellis tweet? Yeah, so I, I tweeted at Mark Ellis, um, comedian and uh, one of the hosts of uh, the movie trivia, Schmodown. Uh, yeah. He was talking about Solo, so I just linked him to our... Oh, uh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Well, there you go. Oh, that's you what I'm hoping the show does. Yeah. I want I want this show to make people go back and rewatch, revisit Solo. It seems and, to have a lot... appreciate it. It seemed like with the Pikes in there, with the possible Kira mm -hmm. and... Um, not Black Sun. Um, the, the other one. The other Syndicate. Crimson, Crimson Dawn. Oh. Crimson Dawn. Crimson Dawn. Yeah. Um, I, I'm holding out hope. This is, you know, it's justice for Solo. <laughs> and well, all these um, and the, all these rumors that we're getting Han Solo at some point in the show. I don't yeah, this put is, any stock in it, but... Yeah. The Star Wars, Star Wars guy mentions mm. Boba Fett will be calling for reinforcements. Mando, Black sure. Chrysan Chrysantan, Chrysantan yep. and Chrysan maybe even Han Solo. Yeah. He's a finale confrontation between Han and Kira. I don't and think I we're going to get Han and Kira connection. I, know. I don't think or want That'd that to cool, happen. In the show. It'd be interesting, but I don't think this is the place for it. But it would have to be Harrison Ford, Han yeah. Solo. I feel That'd like weird. I feel like yeah. when it comes to the actors, there's a, lot, a line drawn in the sand where this actor does this side of the mm -hmm. story and this actor does the other side mm -hmm. with your Ewan McGregor's, with your Mark Hamill's. Yeah. Uh, in uh in like mando mm -hmm. um like it has to it has to be that actor for that time if they do a de-aged han solo a harrison ford i i i i would only be interested in it to see why they hired that deep fake guy at ilm yes because interesting. If he, the way he does he can do it better so if 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 han solo's in it and it's Harrison Ford, and they do the 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 deep fake the on his agent, face. Yeah, and it's the thing in Star Wars that looks good. If they're able to do like as good as Marvel, mm -hmm. then it'd be like, oh shit, okay, all bets are off. Let's do yeah. everybody now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. I Everyone's want. Back. I'm. 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 I'm dying for that Ewan McGregor slash Alec Guinness face Ooh. that they used in like uh, in uh, Rebels. Mm -hmm. like in yeah, Rebels yeah, yeah, the one in between. Towards, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine because we've seen like there's a sideshow statue mm -hmm. yes. where it's got oh, two heads. Using like the old book cover, yeah. It's got a young Alec Guinness head mm -hmm. and an old Ewan McGregor head, and they're mm. almost identical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but if they can do that with a face, mm -hmm. I, I can't. 
It'd be interesting. Uh, like, like, I only want Han Solo here if it's Harrison Ford, and it looks perfect. And we're gonna be looking for it. Yeah, sure. We're gonna be we're gonna be analyzing that face as we're watching. So, oh sure, yeah, yeah. And then for months afterwards, like everyone did with Luke in Mando. Yeah. Um. So, but for I don't some know. reason when we watch the I Marvel think... movies, like uh, uh, Michael Douglas. You're like, oh wow, it's young Michael Douglas, and you just go right back into the story. Like that's what it needs to be. It yeah. needs to be your mind has to accept it immediately, mm-hmm. and then yeah. I could just enjoy the story. With Luke, um, I think the only reason why that worked for me the first time around is because my eyes were completely yeah, right. glazed over. <laughs> I was so dude, I was uncontrollable. Yeah. It was it was nuts. Like there's there's i mean i'm like jay sorry to out you jay but you've mentioned this on screen geeks is you cried everything oh cried everything big old crier i I, i'm kind of the same way but when it came to that luke thing there there there's no hide it was not just like oh i'm just scratching my eye it wasn't that (laughs) yeah i I seen i think everyone we we all were yeah (sighs) anyway i don't know if i'll be like that with han solo i it just if I don't know if they can do that twice, basically. That, get that same them. reaction. Get that right. reaction. It's I'll, a, be, it's a one I'll be as excited. Back. I'll be as excited, but I don't know if I'll have that reaction again. Well, um, and the thing is, like, there's just no way to do that with Han, where Han's just very much is like a show up, shoot you kind of thing, versus you had this an emotional choreograph kind of and, Jedi night. Yeah, yes. and with Grogu, and the fact that it was two seasons in, not just yeah. like seven episodes in, it mm-hmm. was, yeah, it, it's a different, it's got a different weight to it. Um, it would be interesting. It'd be cool. I don't think we'd ever get a scene with him and Kira. I think if anything, it would be like Boba Fett and Luke sort of passing in the ships mm-hmm. as they probably did at the end of Mando. Like they never right. encountered each other in Mandalorian. So yeah. I think it would be a case of like one leaves or dies and then the other arrives or passes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, Scott D here's saying uh, Chris Anton and Chewie know each other uh i believe they do i think they fought i think uh chewie had his ass kicked by black chrysanthemum at some oh. point um yeah that, did that black character is... drop a did black chrysanthemum drop a moon on chewie he didn't know he didn't go quite that far um <laughs> that would be too far yeah oh yeah no one should ever do that why would you why would you drop a moon on chewie um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, I mean he's he's popped up he's he's encountered everyone in comics at this point like he was hired by darth vader specifically and stuff so mm-hmm. yeah of course he's, he's been around <laughs> right um All right what about that that feast that boba and fennec were having uh after they captured was it him tip-yip? was it tip yip was oh, it tip yip? Oh, i don't know was i mean i was looking and i was, looked like there was something that could have been a ronto wrap was there anything else you recognized from galaxy oh Edge? i didn't yeah. know i just was staring at the at the creature the meat sitting on the plate and i'm like i wonder if that's a tip yip because i've had oh. tip yip before okay aka cubed chicken um <laughs> <laughs> but I, the, the rancor the rancor does get uh ronto yeah he has a, a full ronto. Ronto carcass but there was something that looked like uh, either a kebab or a massive burrito or something where it was like, is that is that a Ronto wrap? I don't know. I've not been. Oh, I like oh, a I burrito. <laughs> yeah. With, with that feast, I was just like, why isn't he bringing those kids in? Like, they gotta be starving if they're like all poor and stuff. Like that. <laughs> that was a lot of food. Yeah. And like, why? Yeah. Like he he sent the droid away at one point, but I was like, why did you let it get this extravagant? Yes. <laughs> I like to think that that was, I think that that was Fennec was doing all of that. And then Boba just came in, sat down and started eating. And he was like, who is this for? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I I just, I want, I like, I feel like uh, Boba Fett's just like one step away from like the Fast and the Furious Vin Diesel. Just like, but we're family. And And then bust out the space Coronas. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And then go on a slow speed chase through the streets. (laughs) It was a weirdly paced chase. It was. Um, it, uh, let's see. Let's see. Scott D said, should Han Solo look like uh, Harrison Ford from the Jack Ryan movies as far as the age goes? This is five, five years after yeah, Jedi, so it would be right. more like Witness? Yeah, Witness, not quite Witness? the fugitive. Yeah. Um, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, late 80s. I mean, there's plenty of reference for Harrison Ford in the late 80s. True. So. Yeah. We could, right. they can do it. I'm sure that they could do it if or, they wanted to. 
or uh, uh, Last Crusade, right? That was 80. yeah, Last Crusade's perfect. That oh, was yeah. eighty nine, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's right with right around then. Um, we've got the JT is mentioning the the Battlefront two beard that he had. That was I think a year after Return of the Jedi. Um, he has that beard oh. in one of the books as well. They talk about having Han Solo has grown out a beard when he's helping Chewie liberate Kashyyyk. Um, I don't know if he could like, do it's it. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a full beard. And it, it would be it weird seeing Han Solo weird. The beard. It does look weird. Yeah. It looks weird in the video game. I see why they did it. It was nice continuity stuff because they mentioned sure. the beard. But I don't think... Yeah, and if you're if you're going to do CG like Harrison Ford, you want, you don't want him to look off model. Yeah, exactly. you, want you don't want him to be. Exactly. He still needs to be in a vest. He still needs yep. to have a blood strip down his trousers. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's got to be. Yeah, hundred percent. I guarantee. I guarantee you, they put him in the uh, the Empire Strikes Back jacket. It's a good jacket. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a good jacket. It's arguably um, the best jacket. Yeah, yeah, and that's why they would do that one. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, this old thing. I haven't worn it in a while. <laughs> um. They they mention Fennec mentions that the pikes arriving at the end is just the first wave. Like, can, do we do we think it's just going to be more pikes? Can I um, go go? No, I just I, like these are like a big crime syndicate, but they're using public transportation. Like they don't. Have I thought that was weird. Right? Maybe. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> like, yeah. I was thinking, like, weird. were they trying to hide from the authorities and sneak onto the planet? But like, what authority? It's no authority. Like the the um, <laughs> Mok Shaid seems like the most corrupt mayor ever. So like, yeah. I don't think he's gonna be saying, "Oh no, you can't come into town." But then they come into town. They're all like walking out like slow mo out of the. the but there's also like anyway. random. There's random passengers like in exactly. amongst them. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Oh so yeah. weird. That was the weirdest thing to me. In this, uh, besides the Vespa speed chase, was coming out of uh, what I assume is just public transport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. The, I mean, they say there's like the Star Cruiser or something, don't yeah. they? So it's just like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe Kira's locked down all transport unless she's authorized it and bought their tickets for him. Maybe she gets air miles. Maybe she collects like space air miles. <laughs> There's a company card. J- JT says you don't become a rich crime family by spending your money on extravagances. You exactly. Don't need. Yeah, public I mean, transportation. They've, they've got plenty of spice, but do they have any coaxium of their own? Well, they had a dang yeah. train. Maybe because the train got destroyed. Like it's the finance has been in shambles ah, since the five years ago, though, wasn't it? So the spice train. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> yeah. It was weird. I but... thought that was a bit weird. Venice Beach Sports Network asks, so is the Book of Boba Fett popular? It doesn't seem to be hitting the zeitgeist like Mando. Um, I think with Mando, it Baby was Yoda. the first Star Wars show. And it was, and, and it was Baby Yoda. And it's Baby like, Yoda. Baby Yoda put it into the public zeitgeist, I think, more than yeah. anything else. Like, um, immediately. I saw it. Was, yes. uh, oh, like it, just, it... it was a crossover. Like that, that yeah. like made even non-Star Wars fans pay attention. That was mm-hmm. the one that you could show to anyone. And they were like, oh, I yeah. like the cute guy. Like, yeah. Whereas this, it, I mean, it it outperformed Hawkeye and uh, Wheel of Time and like the most popular shows in December. I saw a stat. Yeah, I, hope that. I saw a tweet. Yeah, uh, friend of the show, future guest Adam Fraser mm. posted that tweet about that. So I guess it is popular. Maybe just I don't know. Public maybe. conversation, maybe not so much, but it's just amongst yeah. Star Wars fans. Mm. Um, I mean, I I can't go onto Twitter without seeing it everywhere uh, th- for the next like two or three days, which is great. I love that, but m- my Twitter feed is full of a lot of people that talk about yeah. Star Wars. The the algorithm knows you like Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, it's, and the people that we as a collective group here follow are gonna be the people that are gonna be talking about Star Wars more than you know maybe Venice Beach Sports Network. They're gonna hear about Baby Yoda. Um, but yeah. I was surprised this morning when I saw that Power Rangers was trending in our live action SW Twitter feed. And I'm like, what is that? Clicked on it. And it was a picture of the swoop bike gang, the, the Vespa <laughs> gang. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, that makes sense. Like, I, I mentioned otherwise... that earlier. I really liked their costumes. I thought they all looked really different. They did definitely look like comic book characters though. Mm-hmm. Like they looked like they were in one of the Dr. Afro comics. Like, there's a few sort of younger characters in that series. One of them's is, name is Just Lucky. Mm-hmm. Um, and it it was like, it. they That's look like nice. those, yeah, they look like those sorts of <laughs> characters. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'd be interested to see more of them. I thought the the other lead uh, was played by 
an actor named Jordan Bolger. Yes. Who's yeah. in Peaky Blinders. Um, I thought he was really good. So mm-hmm. looking forward to seeing more of those guys. He did that really yeah, those quick are cool. spy reconnaissance work, you know, just going to the train. Yeah. Side. Yeah. And just sitting there on his shiny <laughs> bike looking yeah, with his eye. <laughs> What's funny is they, they, they question him at first about, are you sure? And I was waiting for his eye to like show a projection. Oh, yeah. that would have been interesting. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. There, there's been a lot of discussion of the Pikes on Twitter this last week and their appearance in this solo and the Clone Wars and the way mm-hmm. they look. Mm-hmm. And they seem to be. I think you had the best response, Ralph, to that. So why don't you fill us in? I, I liked your well, response. Well, the thing is, I like I said, I, I mentioned like on Twitter is that, you know, there's many different shapes and sizes of humans. Yeah. Um, exactly. There's different cultures. So they don't all have to look the same. Also, for me, like, I feel like Clone Wars is such a stylized show. Yes. Mm-hmm. That the Pikes may be a little bit of a... Um, I feel like maybe wouldn't be as easy to pull off in live action and in exactly. solo. That was that was the first them, place. Different. Yeah, the the animated series was the first place that we saw them. So people are going to think that that's sort of the the more canon version of it. But Look, live that... action's kind of always going to be for me anyway. Like the the canon, and then the animated shows have each individual sort of style yeah. which mm-hmm. which drives me nuts there's something that drives me nuts is that in rebels uh chopper is a cartoony version of an astromech droid mm-hmm. then what then they went and made a like practical version of mm-hmm. the cartoon model for it's that showed up on like the star wars show and showed up at like conventions yeah. and stuff but they use that one. same yeah they use that yeah. same cartoony shaped one in rogue one i'm like no it's He's a stylized version. Mm-hmm. I, not a, <laughs> I don't so, know. It, it looked okay. I, yeah. think, I know what you mean. It's so I, quick. It's so it's quick. It's so quick, but he, it's also like, I think how he was moving looked fine because he looked like he was just moving like a normal yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. If he was like racing by or like flying by on his one wheel like he does in the yeah. show, that would have looked weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the fact that he's moving like a traditional mm-hmm. astromech droid, I thought was fine. It's like, yeah, he can. That's going to be different shapes and sizes. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think uh, Hasbro has done all of the Rebels characters, but they're mm. more like live action style yeah. figures. And the the, uh, the Black Series looks, yeah. yeah, Black Series. The Black Series yeah. chopper looks like a like more I, astromech droid than he he'd sit next to an R two figure, yeah. just fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is fun because, like, with the with like those Rebel action figures. Like I know, or even the Clone Wars action figures, where they do like a Black Series Captain Rex, and I know, mm-hmm. like we saw Tamara Morrison in Revenge of the yeah. Sith unmasked as Stormtroopers, but it's cool seeing after watching you know the Clone Wars for however many years, seven years mm-hmm. or whatever, and then seeing like a Black Series Captain Rex with the Tamara Morrison head. It doesn't look like the Clone Wars version, mm-hmm. no. But it's how it should look. It's exactly. what so, Rex will look like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so there's always a difference between the hot toys the style right? of the animation and uh, yeah, yeah, the, um, the, and the live action. You bringing up Rex and clones and things. Uh, I had a thought while I was watching it through the second time in the Rancor scene. Um, is that Rancor meant to be what's his name? The the young one that the Bad Batch rescued in the Bad Batch. Moochie? No, I Moochie. thought Moochie was. The, was, was the, Jabba's the other, other rancor. one? Okay, yeah. Because cool. um, yeah. I was going to say, if if this is that same rancor, then who's to say that he didn't imprint on one of those clones? And then right. when he sees Boba's face, he's like, "Oh, I know this guy. It's fine." Or or it was like, "Oh, my mommy told me about these guys." Yeah. Or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something, yes. something like that. And then Luke, and then Luke killed my mother. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, no, I thought it was kind of an interesting thought that, you know, there's that face is pretty common in the or has been pretty common in the galaxy. I was I was kind of bummed that it was a rancor. Because it's like, oh, the it's called the Rancor Pit. We must only have Rancors in there. Well, and in the first episode they mentioned Rancors, it won't hold anything else. Yeah. But the first yeah, in the first episode they mentioned Jabba's menagerie, so I was waiting for something new to come out uh, and yeah, take yeah. out or uh, even something else that we might have seen before, or something. But like, yes. Yeah. Has got so when the Rancor came, I was there? like when the Rancor came came or the Rancor came, 
put him in the rancor pit and i'm like oh okay well i guess we're back to square one Mm -hmm. but that conversation about imprinting and writing and not using them as sort of a gladiator thing yeah. uh, made me excited. It was kind of like, that's going to be fun. And they, they specifically mentioned the, the witches of death, and and things like that, which, yep. you know, that's where uh, rancors are sort of native to. So if we see them there, uh, not necessarily cool. there, but like, if we see him riding it, like there is a precedence for it. Mm-hmm. We People also have been riding rancors huts... for years. We also hear where the huts originate from. Yeah. Now Hutter. Like I think we, we knew yeah. That, didn't we? Well, yeah, we knew that. It's it's old legend stuff, and then it was, I think, canonized in Clone Wars. We saw Nal Hutter, but they just—I like that they, you know, in the same way that you shorten names of everywhere, like you just call it Hutter. It's like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's from Hutter. Um, yeah. that'd be fun to see. I guess it would be. Uh oh, Fetz is here. Oh, what does he say? I'm offended at how accurately my manic pixie dream cyborg was captured <laughs> on screen. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm interested to see more. Is she? Is she, she? No. She looked CG. Yeah. Like I don't I don't know what it is. Uh, it's it was interesting to me. I thought she just she she looked glossy mm. in a way that like it almost. I think it was the arm and everything, and might have been yeah. the mics. But there was something about her. She looked like a Lita Battle Angel or something. Like right. it's that sort of almost uncanny valley. And I'm like, this yeah. is an actress. And she she looks almost unreal. Uh, mm. you, even during the second viewing? Ain't not so much, but like I mean, it's something that I noticed back when we that she popped up in the trailer. But there's certain shots where I don't know, she looks like she is more CG than mm-hmm. performer. But that just could be that actress. Uh, oh, Scott wow. mentions the the spider monks, yes, showing up. Also, we get the scene outside Jabba's palace where the dude eats the dude and burps. The war. I like that scene a lot because we've yeah. seen him grab like the the rat or something. Uh, this time, the the rat gets grabbed by a bird, and then he just has them both. Yeah, um, it's good. I thought that was a cute little play on that scene because we know what we're going to expect, it, and then it's the, the spider monk is just like. Because they're like you know uh, immortal monks essentially, I right? guess with their brains and the little mm. robot thing. Yeah. But like, like is that just their existence, just scavenging around? The, the... I mean, that was their palace originally. Like, right? yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I guess we'll just hang around outside and hopefully get some scraps. <laughs> Do they have to eat? I guess they don't. I don't. I, I don't. They have yeah. to recharge. I guess I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but in Jedi, in. in Jedi, they were in the palace, right? There's exactly. one moment yeah. he was in the palace. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So they're able to come and go as they please. Are they? Mm. I don't know. Maybe they've got like a, a secret key. That's how Did Black they... or Santin got in there. That's it. Yeah. The do you think do you... I mean, they could be the same as the, uh, gosh, those those nuns on Octu, where they're yeah. just there to Caretakers. take care of the place. Yeah. Yeah. I like well, that. His second, Scott D's second comment I find interesting as well, because I was just like, this is a clone, so he's stronger, I guess. But he's uh, an unaltered clone. He is he's an unaltered clone. He, yeah, he gets his ass handed to him quite a lot in this show. No um, armor. He tried to get his weapon, but he couldn't. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was interesting how much he's still not a hundred percent. I think that's right. that's part of it. It's like he's not a hundred percent. Like he's learning how to be a crime lord, but he's also physically not there yet. He's he's getting himself back into that shape, well, and he's also crime lord shouldn't have to be fighting. No. They should have other people doing that. And the fact that they weren't there to guard him is strange. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we're showing as well that like Boba Fett is, he's a good man now. Like he's showing mercy. He's, he's telling the he's... Uh, Gamorrean to put the other one in the back to tank. He's like, that's right. his personal back to tank. And he's like, put him in there. He got bit on the shoulder. He's probably a bit banged up. Like, can you imagine Jabba or Bib Fortuna like saying, Help this Gamorrean guard. They were like, eh, they're a dime a dozen, whatever. Get rid no, of one of their felt one of them fell down yeah, into the rank of he, he didn't care. Yeah. And all um, of his mates were just cheering him on. <laughs> and then and then Boba telling Steven Root to lower the prices. Like he's mm-hmm. trying to make everything better. Mm-hmm. We'll see how far it gets. And then he there. and he lets Black Kersantan go. Yeah. Um bit weird that he just, just ran away. off. Just, yeah. just ran off screen like a, a yeah, like a kid who just delivered his one line in the school play. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was interesting. Uh, I think he'll be back. I think he'll be back and fighting for 
Boba Fett's team in this war to come. That's what I thought it would have had. Like, I was just like, it's like, you're free to go. I'm like, no, I want to join your team. Right? I mean, I think, I think that's going to be the thing. It's like when he said, like, don't work for scumbags, basically. It was uh -huh. like, okay, cool. I won't. I'm going to go and sort my shit out. I'm going to go get some weapons. I'm going to go get my ship for, because, you know, I've got probably a parking ticket because I left it overnight. <laughs> and then I'm going to come back and yeah. I'll, I'm going to work for you willingly. I'm not yeah, going to be. Yeah enslaved but i'm gonna work for you willingly yeah, that, that's where i, I can, go ahead bro a uh, different thing go go oh, i was just like i i i'm curious to see you know on a harsh planet like tatooine like the you have to kind of rule with an iron fist because <clears throat> this is a this is a harsh landscape like does boba fett's you know servant leadership style approach is it gonna work in tatooine and and i, I don't know if that's gonna be like a undercurrent of the main storyline of this series is he's trying to do it as a kind person mm -hmm. like, can that work on tatooine and that's you know i'm kind of curious to see how that plays out mm. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sold on it yet i'm also not completely sold on the fact that it is this um mock the mayor who is mm -hmm. contacting the pikes i think he might just be a figurehead like he's oh, yeah. he's a corrupt mayor who kind of just doesn't really do shit but his yeah. major domo i think is the one who is really manipulative. Mm -hmm. um, I liked his sort of Dave's not here, man, sort of yes. scene at the door <laughs> where he's like, hey, I'm just going to go in, in there. And then he just locks it behind him. Uh, the, the guy on the front desk, though, uh, Galen oh Howard, God. he's so good. And I don't yes. know if he's watching the show or not or just like following our uh, Instagram account, but he liked a few of our things while we were talking about the last episode. So oh, really? oh, it's awesome. if you are watching the show, Galen, we are enjoying what you're doing. Thank you very it's much. Great. I, I, every time I was just like, I want to hang out with that guy. Yeah, his, <laughs> his facial expressions when he gets like shoved to the side are brilliant. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, we've been almost going for an hour, uh -huh. which is great because coming into this, both James and I really didn't have a whole lot to say about it. And You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jay, for joining us. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, the thing that's fun about Star Wars is there's always something to talk about. There's always something fun. And regardless even, of, even when there's an episode that we didn't love quite as much, there's another one next week. Yeah. So yeah. that's just great. So um, Jay, you want to shout out some plugs? Sure. Yeah. Uh, follow me and Ralph on the geek dad life channel, youtube.com slash geek dad life. Uh, I do reviews, one-offs, one talking heads, uh, live streams with Ralph on Screen Geeks. I'll also do another live stream on there called Toy Geeks. Screen Geeks, we talk about things that are TV and film. And Toy Geeks, we talk wow. about the latest toy news and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, and yeah, there, I guess there hasn't really been anything outside of this realm that probably we would talk about. But uh, there will be something at some point in time. Right. I don't know, I don't I know if you've ever talked about Spider-Man. A West Side Story. West Side Story? Yeah, sure. I I watched it and loved it. It's really good, by the way, everybody. But anywho, Spielberg. Back to <laughs> Spielberg in West Side Story. You don't like play Ready Player One? Better than Ready Player One. It's it's the the scenes, the the, the that Spielbergian like uh, stage setting and camera movements and everything. Mm, so good. Sure. It is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm totally okay with it. I don't. I don't think I, I'll be. I love yeah. talking with you all and talking Star Wars. Thank you. Thank so you for much. coming, Jay. You're always welcome. And, back if, on. and if you want to see more of Jay talking about Star Wars, go watch our holiday special. We do a complete yeah. running commentary yeah. over every live action scene from the holiday special. Mm -hmm. um, we did do commentary for the animated bit, but it got cut by YouTube. So. Ooh, yeah. you should like put that as like a patreon exclusive or something like uh like you I cut can do it that. out and, and then put it into you know you yeah, have to figure out how to upload that without patreon. youtube slash casino skunk i don't know where, whatever your patreon is yes yes there you go nailed it um i think that's all we have until next time or next time we're going to be at the same time next week yep um, last time with the early ones so for yeah, those of you who have joined us early, thank you. Um, you only have to do it one more week and then we'll be at a schedule that's hopefully a little bit better for everyone else. I'm thinking we'll go back to nine o'clock Pacific. Something like that. We'll figure it out. That, we'll let you know. Time to, yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll do that. Next week, we're going to have another guest, Ken Plume. 
yes. going to be joining us for that. He says he says he doesn't see why he can't do it. So if something comes up and he's not here, then uh, we could all go. We've mentioned him. it on the air now. We're putting him on blast. Like That's he true. has to. He has to show <laughs> right. up now. It's canon. Right. Um, until then, you can visit us at liveactionsw.com. That's our uh, website. Has all our episodes. You can also visit liveactionstarwars.com. Oh, okay, guys. Which cool. is which is the YouTube channel. Okay. That's perfect. kind of our, the YouTube channel is kind of our home base. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, if you want to listen to like audio versions and um, stuff like yeah, that, you can go there well. and find our links and then follow us on social, social, follow us on, oh my God. Follow us on follow social us media. On social. Live action Star Wars. <laughs> no, you missed it. So you messed it up too. <laughs> follow us on socials at live action SW. Until right. next week. <laughs> see my problem is i'm i'm while i'm trying to talk and engage the audience i am trying to move my mouse over into the little video end credits and hit the button and easy. then move my thing i'm like okay then i need to go to end broadcast it's not easy nope. it's not easy if i had like a behind the scenes producer mm-hmm. to do this stuff it'd make my job so much easier but I'm so I'm trying to be engaging to you guys. I'm trying to be engaging to the audience. Listen, and no, James and I are just going to chat while you do that, so that way you have time. Yeah, 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 of course. Okay. Pay attention to so. us, everybody. Don't look at Ralph trying to. <laughs> smoke up. and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors. <laughs> we'll see you in one week. Until then, may the force be with you. Punch it.